I guess first let's let's go with uh, your your conversation that you actually had with the father and where everything got lost in translation after that. Yeah, just to uh, expand on that, it was the August of 2015 uh, after the murders. I attempted to reach uh, Anjum Alam, the father of Komel and Sidra, and um, um, later that afternoon I got a call back, and certainly enough, it was. It was uh, Mr. Alam confirmed that it was him, and, and it certainly was, and we spoke for 35 minutes. A uh, uh, nice guy, uh, easy to talk to, was very pleasant. Um, we had offered, uh, he had made the comment that if he did have, if money wasn't an issue, he would look into hiring an investigator, investigative team, and do some research uh, to, to bring to what really happened here in this case. Uh, I had offered directly on the phone and said at any time if you want to do that and give us the green light We'd help you with fundraising uh, Fundraising efforts or whatever need to be done to, to do that uh, to, to bring uh, the, to bring the truth out, uh, but he was very pleasant to deal with uh, I enjoyed talking with him, and he's very very nice uh, Sidra in, in, in Communicating with her the younger sister of Komel um, Also did reiterate that the family opened up their arms and, and accepted David in and had good times with him. Um, Sidra said the, uh, the, David, in fact, taught her to drive. Uh, they had hung out and watched uh, marathons of the television series The, the Office and, and had a good time. Uh, when David and Kamel came to visit in Texas, um, the mother, Nyla, would make uh, Arabian food that David loved. Uh, she would cook for him, and David and Anjum, the father, would play pool and, and, and talk and hang out. Uh, and so they all got along just just fine. There had been some uh, rumors or discussion that the that the family in the media. Now the media had always said, I guess from the day one, that David was at odds uh, with the family. The Alams were or not pleasant, not happy with their daughter marrying a white veteran uh, army military man from the United States. Uh, so I never got that perception myself. Uh, from what I heard for firsthand uh, from the families, that they got along with David just fine. They may not have agreed on everything, but they had agreed to disagree if that was the case and and move forward. So I'm not sure where the rest of this is uh, necessarily coming from, but uh, we have always on the both of the justice for David Crowley pages. Uh, one was the group, and one is the page. As uh, uh, Anjum, I think would be a big, a good, important key to this case if he were to come uh, forward and and express his views but I'm not sure where it came into that anyone was slandering or going after the Alam family um, or whether it be Nyla and her uh, cancer treatments uh, and Jum uh, with his uh, with with his background and, and what uh, how he's been in, involved in this entire thing but he's been kind of out of the loop but so far we've been on good terms with him since day one and um, the only thing that I remember when things went uh, not bad but when he started not trusting anyone was Judy Prochnow, uh the neighbor of the Crowley's contacted and me and said that the rumor is that I made a call personal phone call to Anjum Alam under the guise of my name was Danny Mason Danny August Mason uh, from the from the Gray State project that's not the case that's controlled Totally not the case. I've never done that. Now, if someone did call Alam, uh, Mr. Alam, and say that they were Danny August Mason, or maybe it was him himself, uh, and, and, and got uh, Mr. Alam uh, confused with that aspect, that certainly may be the case. But uh, I've only spoken to him one time on the phone ever. So, And I clearly stated my name, and we had a good conversation that lasted 35 minutes. So I'm not sure where that is, but uh, I think our group is still on, on the Alam's side. Uh, with whatever help they may need in this case. But just want to clear the air on that. I'm not sure where that's coming from. It might be misinformation. Uh, it might be deliberate, deliberate disinformation as well. So there's no problem. During your, your conversation, it started well with Mr. Alam and it ended well. And the whole time, you believe that you that he understood exactly who he was talking to. Yes, uh, I mentioned that I set up the, uh, the Justice for David Crowley uh, webpage. Uh, said my name is Dan Hennen, um, created the page and would like his information on some things. And he said, sounds good, I'd like to, uh, you know, like, like I'm interested in talking with you. And like I said, the conversation lasted 35 minutes. It was, it was, it was totally positive, it was, it was good. Um, we talked about the case and what we could do to, 
to help and what I could do to help and whatever we could do to get the get the truth out there. So, okay. yeah, to me, there was no room for communication, uh, communication error, uh, whether it be the name or trying to go after you know someone. Uh, no one's going after him, so I'm not sure where that all came from. But uh, just wanted to make sure we're on the same page.